In the last few years, there's been quite a few discoveries in regards to our own planet. And here we're talking about discoveries from within the planet. For example, in some of the videos you can find in the description, we've discussed discoveries of very unusual patches and very unusual structures surrounding the outer core. And here at least one study suggested that it was possibly signs of ancient continents or possibly ancient seafloor that with time got deposited very, very deep into planet Earth, with other studies tackling the structures known as LLSVPs, large low shear velocity provinces that appear as really large chunks in two separate locations, thousands of kilometers in size. And after years of studying this, researchers realized that it's possibly remnants of the ancient planet known as Theia that collided with planet Earth four and a half billion years ago and basically led to the formation of the Moon. And that's on top of the most recent discovery of what the researchers refer to as the innermost core. A separate structure discovered inside the inner core that most likely influences the planet in various ways we still don't understand. And intriguingly, a lot of these discoveries have only been made in the last five years. And that's because in the last few decades, a huge amount of seismic stations around the planet started to publicly share all of their data online allowing researchers to directly compare seismic wave propagation inside the planet. And by doing this over and over and over again, they started to discover certain regions where waves were traveling just a little bit slower, suggesting that something was going on in those regions and not other regions. And with more and more data available every year, even more discoveries became possible. And in this video, we're going to discuss this new discovery that once again surprised everyone. Because looks like on top of all of the other structures, there seems to be another one wrapped around the outer core, and it seems to be shaped like some kind of a donut. But more importantly, it potentially serves some kind of an important role in generating the magnetic field. And so let's talk about this new research in a little bit more detail, focusing on this new structure, now referred to as the Seismic Low Velocity Equatorial Torus, or in short, an outer core donut. But first, just a little bit more about the structure of planet Earth, in case maybe you forgot. So our planet technically has at least three layers inside the core. The newly discovered innermost core, that we basically know very little about, the really dense inner core, and the less dense outer core. And because the outer core is liquid, and consists of mostly iron and nickel, with just a little bit of lighter elements like silicon, oxygen, sulfur, carbon and hydrogen, it essentially forms a really unusual liquid that churns and sloshes around, forming something similar to what you would see inside a typical lava lamp. And so because the bottom of the outer core is a little bit hotter than the top, this temperature difference makes a lot of this liquid metal move in a very similar way to how water moves inside the pot. The process we refer to as convection. And it's this thermal convection that mixes everything inside and technically should make everything somewhat uniform and relatively well mixed. On top of this, this motion is responsible for the formation of the magnetosphere. Which is of course why this particular region has always been extremely important to study, mostly because we still have no idea how exactly the magnetosphere is formed and, more importantly, if it's going to be changing by much anytime soon. Now we know that in the history of the planet, the magnetosphere at some point was actually extremely weak for unknown reasons. And we obviously don't want this to happen anytime soon. And so trying to understand how all of this works is of course why these studies are so important. But in order to understand how this works, we also have to understand chemical elements and the overall composition. And that's because despite all of the iron and nickel, there are still some lighter elements here that potentially play a bit of a role. But naturally, we can't just go inside and study this, so we have to rely on these seismic waves created by various earthquakes that basically produce a kind of an ultrasound which then allows us to scan the planet. But in most cases, in a lot of previous studies, they mostly took a look at the big initial waves that travel from the earthquake to the other side for the first 60 minutes. They usually ignore everything else. Yet in this study, the scientists decided to take a slightly different approach. They decided to focus on the much fainter part of the waves, in geology referred to as coda, and specifically by focusing on similarities of various coda in various locations around the planet. 
And so here they were looking at various waves many hours after the earthquakes have already finished. And the scientific term for this is Coda Correlation Wave Field. Essentially looking for similarities in certain types of waves as they essentially finish circulating inside the planet. And here because the detectors now are really really good at sensing these waves, it allowed them to detect minute differences in signals from various locations on the planet. And more specifically, it allowed them to compare the poles of the planet with the locations closer to the equator. And while it turns out that the locations very close to the poles resulted in waves always traveling faster, yet the locations close to the equator always slowed down the waves. Which the researchers from the study assumed was caused by something like this, an extremely large donut-like shape wrapped around the outer core, slowing down all of the waves passing through this location, but not through the poles. And so the question was, why? Or I guess more specifically, what exactly is this donut? And currently, the only answer that makes sense is that this is a structure formed by extremely light elements, so once again things like for example silicon, carbon and so on, that was most likely released from the Earth's inner core and eventually traveled through the outer core, where due to buoyancy, and potentially due to the rotation of the planet and specific types of convection, forced these elements to deposit in a very certain way. And to be more specific, there seems to be just a little bit more heat transferred from the outer core to the rocky mantle that then forces the structure to form in this very specific way. With all of this also guided by these unusual vertical vortices you see in this picture that are actually formed by the Earth's rotation and the interaction of liquid metals inside the outer core. And because this motion, we believe, is responsible for the geodynamo or the Earth's magnetosphere, it suggests that there seems to be some kind of a connection between the magnetic field, the unusual donut around the outer core, and possibly the higher heat released by the inner core in the equatorial regions. So these light elements, and the differences in temperature and the motion inside the outer core seems to produce the magnetic field that's obviously super important for our own planet. With the actual seismic waves traveling through this, experiencing approximately 2% slower speeds than in the rest of the core, suggesting a relatively large amount of lighter elements that seem to be slowing down the waves as they travel through this region. Now we obviously have no idea what it's actually made out of, but right now it's assumed to be predominantly silicon and oxygen. And so on top of all of the other discoveries from planet Earth, or technically from within planet Earth, this just adds to that mystery. We obviously have no idea how all of this connects just yet, we just know that our planet is a lot more mysterious than we ever thought possible. And more importantly, we now understand that geodynamo and the magnetic field is way more complex than initially thought as well. But because we have so much seismic data now, chances are we're going to be making even more discoveries in the coming years. And so until something else is discovered, check out previous videos from just the last year or so, somewhere in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.